forensics, we're going to be taking a look into uh, the Windows registry and how we can trick Windows into believing it's had a flash drive inserted that it has never seen before. So I am Alexander Kloppel, uh, a recent graduate of UTSA uh, in the cybersecurity and information systems dual major with their College of Business. Um, I was on their uh, Panoply team, uh, we took second. I was also a uh, captain of the CCDC team and president of the Computer Security Association. I consider myself a cyber enthusiast. It is my goal to make the tech that we all use every day safer and more accessible for everyone. And I'm a master of puns. You, no one knows puns better than I know puns. We've got the best puns. <laughs> that, that, was, that was good, that was good. <laughs> I'd like to make this talk, you know, a little me and you. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask questions. I don't know where everyone's going to be at. They didn't, um, I wasn't expected to be thrown into this track, but I'm here anyway to talk to you guys today. So if you have any questions, you know, just raise your hand. If it's gonna be answered on the next slide, I'm not gonna call on you. If it's a dumb question, I'm going to ignore it and move on. But there's no such thing as stupid questions. Keep that in mind. I haven't asked one yet. All right, what's your question? Is this talk funny? It can be. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the registry. Does anybody not know what the Windows registry is? Okay, we've got two, that's fine, because I'm gonna tell you about it. It is a hierarchical database that Windows uses to store all the config files for all the things. Every flash drive you've plugged in, external media, uh, global settings. It's used as uh, an initialization file. In the older days of Windows, we used to have to have um, a little .ini initialization file for each program you had installed. The Windows registry takes that and says, oh, you know, so we'll make it so that every user that logs on can have, you know, their own set of settings and we'll have these global settings and everything's just pulled together. It makes it so that you can also have uh, less privileged users work just well on your machine. Uh, so where is the registry located? Uh, so we have these um, registry hive keys. That's what they call them. Uh, so you have the, the system key, the SAM key, uh, security software, your profiles, and uh, your 32 config. This is where they actually reside on the disk, on your hard disk. Uh, so under C, Windows, System32, config. Have I lost anybody yet? Good, good. Uh, today's focus, we're going to be looking at the, um, the local machine system keys for the current control set under uh, what's been enumerated under the USB storage and under the USB keys itself. The goal, as I had mentioned previously, is to trick Windows into thinking that a flash drive, such as this one, Really? I just gave you one for this demo. <laughs> or this one. Um, that the computer has not seen has actually been inserted into the system. Yes? Why? I'm getting to that. Uh, why? Exploiting what can be done is always fun. Say it with me. Exploring what can be done is always fun. It also changes um, sort of the, the narrative that digital forensics investigations can have. Um, in you know, some court cases, uh, if they look through and they say, oh, you know, uh, we're, we're looking for a, a SanDisk cruiser flash drive, uh, we, we can't find one, but we think that there may be some evidence that could incriminate this guy, let's go buy one from Walmart and try and weasel a confession out of him anyway. They'll go buy an identical flash drive, bring it into the interrogation room. We found your stuff. Boom, full confession. And this, uh, this talk,
kind of flips that upside down. Because, uh, so during my studies, I, I took a digital forensics class with uh, Dr. Nicole Beebe, a you know, huge forensics nut, and she was talking about how in the Windows registry, you have the list of USB drives that have been inserted into the system. You can always delete the registry keys, so the absence of a key doesn't mean the drive hasn't been plugged in, but she had suggested that if the keys are there, the drive has been plugged in. I was the first one to ask, well, can I just plant a key? And the class discussion ended because my questions were too evil. <laughs> so there is this neat little application. It's free and open source. It's called RedShot. What it'll do, it can take a snapshot of your registry before you make changes and after and run like a differential between the two. So you can see what keys were modified, what keys were added, other files that were added, and things like that. Uh, whenever you install software, uninstall software, or insert a handy dandy flash drive. Question? Yes? That thumb drive is appropriate again because login D does the same thing. You know, just another tool. Uh, so uh, you're saying that login D will actually take snapshots of the registry and allow you to diff them? It's something that I'll have to look into. Uh, I'll talk more about it later, but I have more that I want to do with this presentation. So thank you, I'll definitely look into it. Uh, we took a snapshot here, we, I took a snapshot here with RedShot, and th that was the pre-snapshot. Plugged in my flash drive into a computer that's never seen it before, and I was able to get a bunch of registry keys that were added. Uh, these values were also modified, and they added some files and uh, modified attributes. So now that we have these you know, changes in the registry, what can we do with them? We can just take these keys, pull them from the registry, and pop them into another computer. But not if you're just an administrator. You have to be more than that. The registry exists at the low levels of Windows, like the, the internal, the guts, the heart, the soul. The reason that you're here is what the Windows registry is. Uh, so as an administrator, I had attempted to uh, export and then import uh, these flash drive registry keys. I had merged them into one key. Uh, you can't do it as an administrator. However, you can as the system. Running command prompt as NT authority, being the boss, I am the computer. You can do it. So how do you do that? Sysinternals, uh, anyone not familiar with sysinternals? Okay, so uh, Microsoft makes a, a bunch of tools that are used for um, you know, getting a better look at what's going on with your operating system. Uh, the sysinternal suite is available for free. You can check it out at live.sysinternals.com. They have uh, process explorers, um, elevation tools, remote access tools, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so what we're using today is PSExec. Uh, running it with the I, S, and D flags allows you to elevate that command prompt that you'll pop as system. So the, the flags, we're gonna talk about the I flag first, which uh, lets the, the program <coughs> that you tell it to run, so PS exec flags what you're telling it to run. Everyone with me? Okay, so the I flag says, okay, we'll run command prompt so it interacts with this desktop session uh, on this system. Since we're not you know, indicating a remote system, it's this one, right here. The S and D flags, um, <laughs> S is for system, I'm gonna run it as the computer, and D is don't let it terminate. So we have ISD. 
So now that we have these registry entries and we know that we can import them um, to a computer, what can we do? Let's take a look at a live demo. Now, I haven't done a demo before, <coughs> so I'm expecting it to not work at all. <laughs> Just like the malware labs this morning, if anyone was there. So here's my demo. Is that coming up? It's not. Do, 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 do. Don't look at my Google Drive. <laughs> OK, so while we wait for Windows to load, I'm going to talk a little bit. No, go away. <laughs> While we wait for Windows to load, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, you know, where these registry keys are and how you can remove them from your system if you wanted to you know, oh, um, delete flash drives that were inserted into your computer. Um, so as I had said before, it's located under uh, H key local machine, high key local machine um, system. So if you go in there and then find your uh, current control set, you can then go to the USB store and then just delete all of that. Gone. Yes? And you said the absence of that key doesn't necessarily mean that the key is never going to Right. Is that why there's those other artifacts of some sort of a trail? <coughs> yes. Uh, so since Windows uses the NTFS file system, there's always going to be you know little traces of everything everywhere. Nothing is ever truly deleted unless you purposefully zero out the drive or um, randomize the drive. And that leaves artifacts of data deletion as well. Because uh, it's a lot more suspicious to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or a bunch of random characters in your uh, master file tables. Any other questions so far? Have I lost anyone? Is anyone completely lost? Excellent, this is going great. Okay, so there is this neat little free tool um, from a developer called Nearsoft called USB D Review. D -view. <coughs> if we open that up, we can see um, this doesn't talk about any USB storage devices. And if we run RegEdit, and we pull it up, local machine, system, this is the current control set, enum. We don't have a USB store key. In other words, this virtual machine that I just installed last night has not seen a flash drive. I exported the keys that were created whenever I plugged this bad boy in to uh, my gaming computer, which has also never seen it, so I was able to get the, the red shot diff from that to put all of these keys in this neat little folder labeled demo. And so we've got the, the SanDisk keys. If you just try to add it to the registry, you know, as a regular user, we'll say yes, because you know, we totally want to add these registry values. You can't do it. But you know who can? Yes, both of those are correct because it's the same person. <laughs> so if we take a command prompt, run it as administrator, and let's cd over to my uh, downloads directory. Oop, I don't know if I can type, right? So PS exec, what were my flags? Thank you. And we want CMD. Yes, we agree to the terms and conditions of using internals. OK, so as you saw, you know, whenever uh, just the regular command prompt, who am I? That, that's me. This other command prompt win window that I made at spawn, if we ask who am I, 
NT authority system. So if we use uh, reg import, uh, got to type the full path because I don't have it, you know, sitting in my system 32. Me. Ah. Just gonna be one of those days. Demo. And then we have uh, sandisk one dot reg. Successful. Two. Successful. And now, if we take this, we close it out, we close out of our reg edit, and we wait, and check this out. We open up reg edit. Now we have a USB store. And now it talks about that sand disk. If we open up, um, the USB D view. Mass storage. SanDisk, USB. We scroll it over. Slowly. You get a serial number. And that's the actual serial number of this drive that this computer has not had plugged in. Any questions? Yes? Yes, okay, so the, the, the date you know, is right now. So that's something that uh, I've had to look into. I reached out to Dr. Beebe after I had you know, successfully pulled this off. I failed so many times trying to actually get this to work. I didn't think it was possible. Whenever I finally did manage to get this, uh, B-Sides was two days later. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was either gonna have a really cool presentation or a presentation about failure and how awesome that can be. Um, so I reached out to Dr. Nicole Beebe at UTSA and she actually got me in touch with uh, Mr. Harlan Carvey. He's a Windows registry expert and a forensics author. Uh, he's given me some other things to look into, and so I'm going to look into uh, modifying you know, the, the, the created dates, um, trying to see how I can fool the, the setup API log, and automate all of it with PowerShell. That's next year's talk. <laughs> yes? Well, was there a reason you had two imports? Oh, yes, okay, so one of them um, imports the, uh, the USB store, and the other one imports into the, the USB key itself. So if we, do, 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 am I blind? I'm blind, open and reg edit. Yes. It also adds uh, this set of keys in the, the USB folder tree. Yes. I see that you get it working well on Windows 7. Have you tried like on Windows 8 or Windows 10 by chance? Not yet. Question. What was the question? Uh, the, the, the question was, it's working here in Windows 7. How about 8 or 10? The answer is not yet. Haven't yes. tried it. Yes, it'll work. It'll work? Yeah. All right. No, unfortunately, um, forensically being able to do this, me trying to get Victor around out here in trouble saying, no, dude, you plugged in your form. You know, I didn't do it, man. Um, this is kind of the use case for this particular scenario. But the amount of noise you generated Again, refer to thumb drive again. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe I'll have to try and run the experiment running uh, log MD, yeah, see what it makes. Yourself, and so you can see what it is that you did to see how you might get around it. PowerShell also be very noisy. Uh, Harlan led you to that path because PowerShell by default is not logged. But if you do look from the thumb drive, then you'll realize that you can catch all that stuff and you'll see your activity. Um, and so part of the goal here would be, A, how do you clean up your tracks? B, do it as quiet as possible. You might want to look at the sticky key exploit for this command prompt instead of doing it the way you did it. Oh, it's right. Uh, you, 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 could, you could switch you know, uh, CMD and set HC and then pop sticky keys. But I feel that that edits. Uh, you, you have to be able to get to the machine to be able to reboot it to be able to switch the actual executables. No, you said that to Rich Key. 
So really? There's, yeah, there's an auto-run function of set it yet. So the accessibility is what we're talking about. You hit shift, you know, shift key five times, mm -hmm. you get a pop-up box. Uh, you can actually tell the key and registry if you add it, then it will automatically make that association because you're now telling Windows, no, it's not setHC.exe, it's command.exe, it'll pop up the, the browser. No reboot required, nothing, just add a registry. I'll have to look into that. Thank um, you. But there's a lot of noise you generate. You should probably look into that in the course of the research in order to see if you can be a little more covert about it. Absolutely. Because I know Victor Arano would catch me doing this to him in this scenario, so you, you want to be the, so hack yourself and see what you can detect. Yes. So in this case, you just pretty much need like a, a smoke screen or like, I guess a ghost drive in this case. Would this be possible for like any other devices? Say a network card or something? I don't have enough information to answer your question. The, the question was, uh, could this be done with other devices, like network devices? Haven't tried it yet. I'm sure it could. Uh, if all you're doing is putting in the registry keys, I don't see why not. I'll add that to my list of things to try. I probably went a little too fast. I went way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We can talk about detection of it if you want. Does anybody have any other questions before we maybe? Yes. You kind of covered it a little bit, but I was the same thing with like the whole noise part. So mm -hmm. I think the, the premise and the use case behind this is being able to obfuscate like digital forensic investigations. Yeah. Like by being able to search other things in the registry. Now, to be fair, uh, I'm normally a, a blue team defensive kind of guy. I don't know how noisy uh, the things I do would be. Uh, this is really my first like foray into uh, evidence manipulation, if you will. Yes? So I got to say this because I know Michael. So I don't think you have to defend your presentation. No, I, I, think, no, I, think, the, I think the point is it's, it's a way that you can do false flags and it can definitely generate a ton of noise. And depending on who your target is, and depending on what access to resources they have to detect it, it's obviously an exploit that can be used. And the real question is, why is it even possible? Versus how are all those that you can detect and what you can do about it? And for that, I think the presentation is good to show that it's a defense that you have to think about as a security practitioner about how you prevent somebody from doing this kind of stupid shit because you may be able to identify it. Or if you're going to pick on me and make it look like I did. Exactly. And so for that, <laughs> for that, I think it's a worthwhile discussion. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, just just a little bit. Enough for you to flee to Mexico. <laughs> now, were, were there any other questions? I know I like completely blew through this time. Uh, so so we've got some more time. If you guys wanted to ask anything, favorite color. <laughs> What's your favorite color? It depends on the day of the week. <laughs> What's your mother's maiden name? I'm not giving out PII. <laughs> What's the last USB you plugged into that? The last USB I plugged into this is 
from this wireless presenter. Now, it may not, uh, it doesn't show up as a storage device, so we wouldn't see it in, ugh, 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 <laughs> in this list here, but, yeah. Have you done, have you looked at anything in terms of, like, some of the tools and utilities that are out there, both open source and commercial, that will be able to actually prevent this? I haven't in looked into, uh, oh, sorry. Because well, there are tools out there that will actually do USB signing, so mm -hmm. you can only use specific USBs, and, you know, again, more of the preventive angle, and I was just wondering if you looked into that, because they're all run as NT authority as well. Um, so, so the, the data protections, like, that an enterprise would have, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't have access to that. I haven't looked into too much of the, the open source, and I definitely don't have the budget for enterprise. I mean, I just graduated. Give me a job, please. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, what, what I really wanted to target with this case uh, was more the individual and less the corporation. And you know the individual, you know, uh, grandma down the street, she's not gonna have USB signing protection unless she's my grandma and I set it up for her. Okay, when we frame the detective, because they're probably they probably don't know. They're looking at the detective while we're going to Mexico. That's a great idea. Yes. So besides just like incriminating someone, what other values does this have? That's up to you guys. <laughs> I just proved that it could be done. <laughs> <laughs> you guys figure out what to do with it. So another way to look at this, what you could do if you were a criminal and had such intentions, was not so much that you plugged in the thumb drive and my, my suspect just fled to Mexico so I can't use them anymore, um, is that what if this thumb drive that you claimed I plugged in to prove to you it was plugged into five other computers, suddenly your case against me is swept away. So you can use it to kind of decriminate well, yeah, well you by incriminating you, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> by incriminating others. Well, and if you can inject the key, getting past the proactive defenses, which actually I played with this, and I think you actually can do this, um, you can actually take your laptop offline and be able to inject a USB attack without having to worry about only being able to use the corporate issue USB. Because it would have already been recognized and accepted by the system, and that's usually over, that overrides whatever like carbon black is one of their tools we can look at. So it's actually a way you can actually kind of get a foothold into the system without, you know, kind of backdooring it in that way. Another thing I plan on looking Which into is, uh, so this serial number is the actual serial number. I want to see if I can make a drive that doesn't actually exist. One that literally doesn't exist. Not one that's never been in the computer, but one that doesn't have physical form change the serial, make up a manufacturer, things like that. So I've, I've got places for this talk to go, but I didn't have um, my mentors get back to me soon enough, so it's like I blew through all my slides too quick. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time, yes? So I've got a question, uh, I know you mentioned you didn't really look into it, but maybe you have some ideas, the dates up there, those don't exist as values, so is that just So, so these, um, these created dates, that's whenever I ran um, PS exec command boop, import. Uh, there may be a way for me to actually, um, what, what, what is it, um, time stomp the, the, the values to change uh, the values that are reported in the registry. Because uh, you can alter the, the metadata to you know, uh, read, write, and access. So we just change that, and this is a good first step. Yes, in the back. Can the system time space that issue? Obviously, it would be the, we're changing the system time of the system, uh, affect that? What? Can the system time of the system affect that? Let's find out. <laughs> OK, so while I'm changing the system time, uh, next question. I thought I saw a question over here. How did I what? I'm not. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Ah! 
It's opening too many! Did you sacrifice to the demo gods? I did. Like, uh, a lamb this morning. I thought it had to be a sibling sacrifice. Uh, okay, well, are you ready? No, sit down. Oh, look, it's Thursday. Uh, let's... Open and regedit. Will it let me delete it from here? See, this is why live demos are always fun. Yes. There you go. Is this still NT? Yes. Aha. So there's noisy PS exec. <laughs> but where's my red jet? There we go. VMware, gotta love it, right? No, wrong control set, bad. Um, so we didn't have a USB store before, and now we don't. So where was the key for this bad guy? Should we open it and regedit it? Just so I know where it is, because I didn't write it down. Yes. I do appreciate y'all's patience. It's an after lunch talk, you know, kind of relaxed. Now yeah, let's just delete everything from it. Okay, and so we've got our system time to Thursday. We're in the past, the mysterious past. Uh, da, 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 da. Come back over here. Who am I? I'm still NT authority. Let's import. And import. If we close that out. Close that one out. Do what? It already said it. Oh, uh, that's what I get for not reading. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Well, I broke it. Da 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 da. So to answer your question, yes. But how noisy is it? Probably very. Any last thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? All right, well, thanks for, yes, sorry, I didn't see you. So, would it be interesting if we, let's say, if there was another device attached to the registry and replace it with this, just because it's a little bit covered back? Yes. 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 You, you can do that. Um, so, either by modifying the, the registry entries that are already there, uh, or doing this, remove and insert a new one. Anybody else? Going once, going twice, 
Class dismissed. Thanks for coming out.